I have always worked with steel. I like its objectivity. It has an even nature throughout. I like its heaviness and its denseness, its tangibility. I like how it shows degrees of temperature. I like the way it radiates heat or freezes the skin. It's different from wood in the way it reflects these extremes. Using steel reveals a lot about subjective-objective relationships. When I cut out a silhouette, it's like laying a skin, a recognition of life over the material world. Yet it's a contradiction. No matter how thin you slice the silhouette, the image remains the same. My proposal for the University of Lethbridge sculpture competition was a structural landscape with animal silhouette. Its sources were the sluice and the coulee. The prominent feature of the North Roof Terrace, the sculpture site, is that of a thoroughfare. What I am proposing is a rolling screen parallel to the spectator's route, a silhouette or template of the landscape that permits passage by the viewer in the same way that the university allows the coulee to pass through. In preparation for this proposal, I brought to Lethbridge a work of mine entitled Tico with Broken Bass, 1980. In order to resolve the problem of mediating the space between Cooley and Terrace, this investigation confirmed my decision to use an animal in this work. It is a sense of duality I wish to maintain. As with Tico and several other works of mine over the past two years, the proposed animal utilizes a two and a half inch thick steel canine silhouette. This provides both image and object for the viewer. The format then allows for empathy without allowing at the same time the complete displacement of the subject by the viewer's comprehension. The sculpture is comprised of a landscape, a split facade, a doorway to the silhouette of an animal. Within this integrated structure I have attempted to maintain a unity of elements while making a clear distinction between image and mechanism. With the proposed sculpture, I am making reference to the university's ecologically inspired location in the landscape. Sitting like a sluiceway across a coulee, the building becomes for me a cultural statement about ecology. This connection between culture and ecology is what I am exploring, using the sculpture as a model for investigation. The various relationships, physical and mental, between the sculpture and its context, the flat deck of the building, the landscape, the, the animal and the viewer, are analogous to the various relationships between the building and its environment, the coulee, the natural landscape and people. I want the sculpture to act as a mediator in this precarious balancing of relationships, suggesting in the process that culture and ecology are inextricably linked.
I've spent nearly two years on this work. I started by using the occasion of the competition itself as a chance to review my situation both work-wise and personally. I needed to make a theater in order for this exploration to take place. So I borrowed the coolies and made them artificial, made them theater. The coolies are the surprise element in the Lethbridge landscape. Lethbridge is flat, a flat prairie, except that it has these glacial crevices, or gullies. One sees the coolies as the transitional point between the flat prairie and the river channel. The coolies are the fingers of this transition. The way the sides of the coolies fold in on each other form natural sets of gates or doorways. These foldings can also be seen as diminishing sets of facades.
When I was flown up to see the deck, the main deck, I knew that I wanted to put an animal on it, even before I considered the coulee formation in the doorway. And I had uh, an earlier piece in mind called uh, Marconi. And I took in my mind Marconi and put it on the deck. Marconi is the future of the deck, the future silence of the deck. Take the future as an entrance to Western Channel. From this vantage point, one looks down on the main deck. In the act of looking down, the deck becomes a plateau, isolated in space. On the far deck, the natural earth ramp is eroded, leaving the stairs to drop off suddenly. The University of Lethbridge has three decks. One may enter the building from the roof, or one may walk down the coulee side to the main deck. Walking the length of the main deck, one enters the building at the sixth floor level. Inside, one crosses the large open space of a concourse to come out on the far deck, overlooking the river. From this deck, concrete steps provide a transition to the ramped earth of the coolies sloping down to the river. This deck, with its steps into the coolies, is in direct contrast to the main deck. Yet, the university building, contained and isolated by the landscape, has a classic timeless quality. Such timelessness evokes notions of stillness or lack of change. The main deck was ideal for the stage set in one sense because there's no view, at least no view in a picturesque sense.
I like what happens sometimes when people talk. I like the life that takes place in conversation. I feel there's no truth in words, only in actions. That's why most of my work deals with movement. Work creates a complexity of relationships in order to stall time, past, present, and future. complex set of relationships is through repetition, through reiteration. Doorways imply movement, and movement implies relationships. A natural doorway is found in the Cooley formation, a natural passage for movement. This movement, or doorway, is maintained by the open structure at the base of the university, and again is found in the concourse that separates the decks of the university. The steel doorway of Western Channel further reiterates these movements, these relationships.
wanted Western Channel to provoke a variety of reflections on the part of the viewer. There are three canine figures involved in the drama of the piece. I chose the wolf for its elusive sense of freedom. I chose the German Shepherd for its linearity, a purebred linearity produced through a hundred years of selective breeding. I also chose the German Shepherd because it looks like the wolf. Good and bad, this visual closeness provokes confusion. Most people hate confusion. In this case, confusion is useful because the similarities of the dog and wolf are as important as their differences. They are animals, they are silent, they are not objects. They are reflexive to us. Perhaps their real difference is in their quality of distinction from us. The wolf is distinct as a species. It was the idea of species that I wanted to provoke by duplicating the wolf by putting it in two places at once. Okay, done, Wally. I made the coolie facades of Western Channel from one and three quarter inch thick cork and steel plate. Thickness is important. The animals are flame cut from two and a half inch thick cork and steel plate. A two and a half inch thickness is ideal. Anything larger gets in the way of the image. Too little means there is no substance to back up the image. On the main deck, I set up an intersection in the form of a dramatic tableau. I have the wolf posed on an axis to move through the steel doorway. Its natural movement represents the natural movement of the land through the university.
The dog is positioned at an angle to intersect or interrupt that movement. The wolf is moving, the dog is held by command. There is another side to Western Channel. On the far deck, a wolf identical to the first is seen in silhouette against the natural river channel. Here the moving image is duplicated. The idea of the wolf in two places at once, the idea of species. Here the wolf's movement is seen against the real possibility of stepping into the landscape. To leave the piece on the main deck is to leave the piece enclosed in its own drama. The origin of Western Channel was the idea of free passage, a freedom provided by the open passage at the university's base, the free movement of animals or the free movement of men. The form of the work came from the shape of the coolies, the way one side folds into the other. It's at this point of folding that a doorway naturally occurs. In bringing the coolies with their natural doorway to the sculpture site, a deck on the university's sixth level, I was bringing the university's base, its own natural doorway, to a site once likened to the deck of a space age aircraft. All the time I was thinking of the university's location, I was thinking about the sculpture site, that space age deck. From the beginning, I wanted to put an animal on it. I could see it in the future with an animal on it. All the animals I've done presume a special kind of gaze. Rather, I presume they see only what is in front of them, a corridor of sight determined by their two and a half inch thickness. It is this mixing of natural and artificial that is brought together in the name and idea of Western Channel. As in Lethbridge, where the river runs into man-made irrigation canals, the university sits at the same point of intersection. It is this intersection that the wolf and the German shepherd repeat on their space-age deck. Presume, then, that the shepherd's corridor of sight extends through the building to the far deck. There it picks up an identical wolf skimming past the edge of the deck. Beyond this wolf, one steps naturally into the river Cooley. Without this possibility of stepping, all canals become artificial, all decks become asteroids. Without the past, the future will only exist as theatre.